Hi guys, this is Lauren from Lauren Watkins Art and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to paint this beautiful fall landscape using soft pastels. Um, I will be starting off using my Mangayo soft pastel um, sticks. I will also be using um, my Carb Othello pastel pencils and I will be working on UR 100 grit sanded paper. I have some other um, tools I'll be using and supplies for full information on that and a link to the reference photo. Please hit the description box and you will be linked up to my blog post where I go in more detail. I'm going to start off by taking a ruler to draw a straight horizon line on the bottom third of the paper. You don't have to use a ruler, you can use um, whatever you have that will help you create a straight line. Um, now I'm starting to block in the basic shapes that I saw while um, I saw on my picture and I'm adding in some basic colors to kind of help create an underpainting for that. Um, using some darker colors for where the shadows will be in the clouds, blue for the sky, um, uh, orangey brown for the hills in the distance, and green and brown for the foreground. Um, I blended that out using an old paintbrush and just rubbing alcohol that you get from the grocery store. Um, in the pharmacy department, it's about a dollar for a gigantic bottle of it and you can, you, you can reuse it. And it's a great way to get an underpainting that dries quickly. Now I'm taking um, a white pastel um, from my uh, Mangayo set. It's one of the long skinny ones. Um, it's a little bit stiffer um, of a pastel. And I'm blo I blocked in the white of the clouds and now I'm blocking in the shadows and a little bit more of the sky. I'm blending it out with my um, finger at this point. Um, later I will use uh, a rubber blender um, that I'll link below. Um, but you can use your finger, you can use kind of those paper blending sticks that you get in drawing sets. You can use whatever you have. Um, just make sure you're just blending it out softly and kind of getting those soft lines that you tend to see in the clouds. So there's the rubber blender blending it out. Now I've added some shadows to the bottom of the clouds and typically when we think of clouds we think of white fluffy clouds but I added the shadow under it because the sun in this picture is shining above the clouds and so the bottom of the clouds the part that we see will be in shadow. Now you can see I've started to block in the midground and the foreground. Um, I'm just kind of using some base colors that I see in the reference photo. So kind of some oranges where the trees are starting to turn colors, greens um, where the field, just getting the basic shapes in and the basic colors in that area. And I'm also starting to put in the shadows. Um, and I'm right now I'm blending it out using a rubber tool. Again, use whatever tool you have for blending. Um, I just I want this part to be soft. A lot of pastel artists never blend. I like to blend in the beginning layers, and then um, the further along I go, the less I blend. Now you saw me spray my paper. Um, that was a workable fixative. Um, I tend to um, spray in between so many layers. Um, that just allows me to be able to use my pencils longer because the workable fixative holds those bottom layers down and it allows me to draw more with my pencils. Um, pa pastel pencils tend to be harder pastel and with pastels you kind of take this lean over fat approach kind of like oil painting but instead of trying to do instead of doing oils over acrylics you're doing your hard pastels first and then do the soft ones because if you try to draw on with a hard pastel over the soft ones, what it does is it just scrapes up the pastel that you've already laid down instead of depositing color. Um, so I found that working on sanded paper and also using a workable fixative um, allows me to do more of that um, layering of different hardnesses longer. Um, you can see I've started to add more shadow, more colors. I'm just looking at my reference photo. Um, I'm keeping these bottom layers darker than 
what I may want in the end result and that's because you can't really see the light values as well unless there's dark next to it and it's a lot easier to just put dark underneath and then layer up the lighter colors on top. Now if this can be hard to do if you're used to working in watercolor which watercolor tends to work in reverse where you go light to dark. Um, most other mediums that are opaque you you work from dark to light. So just kind of keep that in mind and keep the order in which you layer things and draw them in um, in mind. So I tend to usually start with the sky and then I work my way down as I work on the picture. So I do sky, then I tend to do a mid ground, then foreground, and that just makes it a lot easier because I'm not trying to draw, draw a blue sky around trees that I block in or around leaves on a tree. I can draw just draw the leaves on top. Now you saw me take the board off and that was because I was shaking some of the pigment that had built up into the garbage can. You don't really want to blow on your pastels because that pe pigment will blow up into your face. Now as you see me work, you're going to see me start adding different colors um, and layering them up in maybe in areas that don't seem to fit. So you may see me add orange to the green grass or you'll see me add yellow um, or blues and purples to um, colors that don't seem to fit where I'm putting them. And part of that is, is because I'm trying to get the, the color to appear in the, how I want it to. And when you're stuck with like pastels where you can't mix them the same way as you do paint, you tend to mix on the paper. So a lot of the greens in the Mangayo set, there's some neutral ones, but they tend to be very light. So, But the darker colors um, tend to be um, more unnatural green. They're beautiful colors, but they don't really fit with what you see in nature. And so I'm going to add purples to them and oranges to them to help neutralize that ultra vibrancy in it. Um, because orange and purple both have um, red in them. And red is the opposite color of green. And so it can neutralize it and help tone it down. And so if I need it to be a little bit darker of a green, then I will add um, my dark purples to it. If I need it to be a little bit lighter of a green but still neutral, I will add an orange based yellow to it and so I just kind of layer these colors up to get the color I want. Now even if you had thousands of pastels like I do, you still have to layer like that to get the effect you want. You're never going to be able to find the exact color for every section of your picture. And even if you did, it wouldn't look as uh, cohesive. But by using colors and using them all over your picture and layering them, you get a lot more depth, you get a lot more interest, and you get a better effect overall. Um, if you want to learn more about color theory, I will have a video coming up teaching color theory and how colors layer um, in a few weeks. And I will have a printout of that you can use to um, learn um, how to mix colors. Now you see I've started adding more shadows, um, I'm layering more colors, I blend some out, leave some hard, but I'm really just looking at my reference photo and, and at times taking a step back from my picture to see what it looks like at a distance. Um, if I'm having a hard time being able to tell what I need to do on a picture, I find kind of taking a step back and kind of squinting at it, I can see what areas pop and what kind of fall back. And so it gives me an idea of what I need to push the values on and what I need to blend together. So if it, everything's kind of flat when looking at it from a distance, that means I need to up the contrast. I need to have darker darks and possibly lighter lights. It just depends on what the picture needs. Now, as we go along, you can see I'm starting to pull in some more unusual colors into the picture. Um, they're colors that you don't see in the reference photo. They're just ones I decided to add to kind of spice things up. Um, I really like adding um, hints of unusual colors into my pieces. Um, so you'll see some magentas and some vibrant purples and blues and turquoise and teals um, kind of spread throughout this picture. 
And I like doing that. Um, that's kind of just how I like to work as an artist. I like to add a little bit of extra fun color to things. You can make this as realistic as you want. This is just a personal choice. Um, but I found when I want to um, add those fun colors, it helps to have a more realistic base. So I've added more realistic colors and I made it pretty realistic about 85% of the way and then I started adding um, some fun colors to kind of spice things up. And I also took a break and that allowed me to see what areas needed a little bit of work. Um, sometimes if we work on things too much in, um, at one time, we kind of miss big errors. So I'm kind of softening up the clouds. I didn't want it to look like it was a thunderstorm. I just wanted it to look like a cloud um, that was hiding the sun a little bit. And so I softened up the look in the cloud. I added some purples to it to help tie it into the ground. I'm adding some highlights to the field. Um, I'll be adding some purples where I need shadows and just kind of doing the final pieces on this. This last clip I was only working on for about five minutes, but it took this picture from kind of an average painting to something that was more interesting and more inspiring. So, you know, have fun with your pieces. Have um, don't be afraid to take chances, because if I didn't like this, I could just go over with more pastel and cover it up. So take those chances and have fun while you're working. Um, the most important things you can do is look at your reference photo, look at the, the shapes and where the, the shadows are. Um, look at the shape of the cloud. Don't just make up your own cloud. Look at the shapes of it. Look at the angle things are, are in. Um, you can hold your pencil up to your picture and hold it at the angle it is and then compare it to your reference photo if you need a little bit more help looking at what the what the size or angle something needs to be at. But taking your time on the when you're doing the foundation of your piece will help you get a better result and allow you to create what you want. Now I'm starting I'm just Finishing this up, adding some purple in the cloud, and I will be signing this in a minute. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I hope this tutorial slash just tips and tricks um, helps you. And don't forget to check out my blog post to get more information about everything I use to create this. I hope you have a great day. And if you like this video, please hit like. And if you want to see more, please hit subscribe. Thanks.